Hello. Today we're going to take some greasy race bearings like these and make one of these. I mean, it won't be exactly like that, but harken back to the last time we forged the balls in our grime pile into a solid billet and made a cool little hunter or paring knife or something. It didn't etch really well, but it was super sharp. Check below for a link to that video. So this time we're going to clean up some fully intact race bearings in acetone and prepare them for use. Now, I can't forge an entire knife just from these bearings, so the plan is to incorporate them into a flat bar of 52100 steel. Get it? They're 52100 steel. We're going to use 52100 steel. But how do? The idea is to plug weld the round bearing into round holes we cut in our 52100 flat bar. If the bearing fits snug enough into the cutout when we bring it to the forge welding temperatures and press it flat, the sides should bulge out and weld to the flat piece of 52100 around it. Time to get everything laid out. We'll measure our steel and construct a canister to accomplish the welding in. I thought you were plug welding. Why are you doing it in a canister? Well, there's two reasons to do it in a canister. First, these bearings are 35 millimeters in diameter, and I bought a 35 millimeter metal hole saw instead of one slightly smaller, which does exist. When accounting for the wobble in my drill press, these holes are going to be ever so slightly wider than the 35 millimeter bearings. The gap is tiny, but enough to make straight up plug welding a little too difficult for a guy who's never tried it before. Remember that fit has to be super tight for a plug weld to work, or at least that's my understanding. I should tell you, each of these holes took about 15 minutes to drill. It was excruciating. The second and the main reason for using a canister is that we have to fill the gaps around the races and bearings to keep them as intact as possible in our final knife. We want to see them. We want, we want them to be there. Filling those gaps with 4600 KC steel powder that has 2% nickel in it and etches brighter than a 52100 flat bar in the bearings is a great choice. It'll really make everything sort of stand out and come together. As you can see, I've coated everything I don't want to weld together into one piece with white titanium dioxide. And at the top and the bottom of the canister, I put steel foil as well to keep the canister from welding to our billet. I put paper in the canister to eat up any oxygen because we want as little oxygen in there as possible. It can inhibit forge welding by forming oxides on the steel surface. The canister is going to be arc welded shut, then heated in a forge, and we'll press it flat. Things are going to be sticky because we only compressed the canister in one direction. We didn't really rotate it and press it again, which would have pushed some of those surfaces that didn't weld back apart. Doing so, though, would have elongated our round bearings and turned them from circles into ovals. Thank you. 
The stuff going tink tink is the outer canister. The steel foil is sort of peeling off pretty easily beneath that. We're going to have to do some surface grinding to get this ready for a little test etch, but that shouldn't be a problem. That pattern looks pretty good, but we're going to have to grind down a little deeper to get more detail out of it. How much deeper? Uh, a lot deeper. I'm noticing a couple things. First is that when I cut these holes, for whatever reason, somehow this distance was not quite right. It was closer than these two, which is sort of, <laughs> sort of a bummer because I measured that sort of closely. But as things have spread out and the build's gotten wider and longer, this discrepancy becomes more noticeable. So fortunately, a Nakiri is about six and a half inches, just under in a lot of cases. And if we go from about there to there, that's about six and a half inches. So this is gonna be sort of what our knife is gonna look like. This area here should ground out. It can't be that much deeper. And I think as we grind down a little more on this side that we'll also get a better look at the ball bearings that are sort of missing from the pattern. Now, I wasn't paying attention. When I had this on the surface grinder, I was really just sort of bringing it over and etching it and trying to get these patterns equal and get all the uh, 4600K stuff off. And I didn't really recognize how thin I was getting. This is way thinner than I usually like to quench. And so this could get to be a bit of a challenge, keeping this straight and a quench. And, and I don't know. I'm not looking forward to that. But it's basically time to cut off the, the, the bits we don't need and start thermal cycling and... Get ready for quench. All right, we got it cut out and I put it back in the forge and then straightened it in a vise a little bit. And I did a little bit of thermal cycling there, but it's ready to go into our steel foil packet. And we're gonna run it into the heat treat oven for some formal thermal cycling before we quench. And don't forget, I haven't, that we put titanium dioxide on the inside of these bearings. And I am quite surprised to see that they appeared to be welded, at least until now. You can sort of see maybe some little gaps forming in there. I don't know. I think that would be super interesting if they decide to pop out in a quench or something, or we'll see what happens. I'm wondering if ultimately we'll be able to just sort of knock them out, or uh, there comes a point where it just sort of is what it is. And if they're there, they're there, you know, we'll see. Here you're gonna see the oil catch fire during the quench as I try to remove the knife from the quench while it's still hot. I'm trying to get it out while it's over 400 degrees so it's still malleable enough to flatten between two aluminum plates and eliminate any warping. The problem I'm having is removing it when it's that hot, it's still above the flash point of the oil so it catches fire and I can't really press it when it's like that so there's some back and forth between the plates and the oil before it's cool enough to press and it came out pretty straight. I'm really sort of impressed. I was worried that there was going to be some significant warping there. The hardness is 65 HRC or thereabouts, best I can tell with these hardness files. I don't really ever show tempering anymore because it's just so boring. But before grinding, this was tempered twice. The files say it was a hardness of just over 60 when I did that. So as I'm grinding, I'm dipping this in and out of water, and you can start to see that there's oxides accumulating sort of inside these circles where we have the titanium dioxide that I was hoping these little plugs wouldn't weld. 
And then I was hoping that they'd sort of fall out during the quench if they were, um, you know, if they weren't welded. But now I can tell that these are pretty, pretty well not welded. They're not really solidly forge welded. That doesn't mean they won't stay in. They're really pinched in there with all the sort of grooves and little micro aberrations and, and things like that. I doubt they would come out. And it's going to be very difficult to get them out at this point because this thing is hardened and putting tooling on hardened steel is a big risk, especially when it's this thin. So, um, you know, I'm not anxious to just sort of crack this open. Maybe I can, you know, the question is, should I, should I just leave it? I don't think these will fall out in anyone's food. Um, and it's a better chopper or slicer when they're in, or should I take them out for the effect and risk damaging this irreparably? In the matter of irreparable damage versus playing it safe, Steve has chosen irreparable damage. Alright, well, our first hair-raising hole is done. About 36 more and I'll have these plugs straight out. So actually things pretty much went off without a hitch here. I was really worried we were going to crack some steel or put about... $90 of carbide bits in the trash, but this happened and it worked, so. We didn't have very many doubts that this middle portion wasn't forge welded into the rest of the piece, but when I'm using the grinder to get the uh, bits out on the side and it oxidizes because it gets too hot and that oxidation stops at exactly that border between the two pieces, the middle piece and the outside ring, that's a really good indication that that weld didn't happen. The knife is in one piece, but I haven't really done much in the way of finished grinding or really grinding bevels. So we're going to work long and hard to keeping this thing straight and getting it pretty thin. All right, I'm going to talk real fast. Let's peek our final etch and then make a handle. I had to etch this very deeply to be able to polish the bright parts of the bearings because they're so far apart from each other that it's easy to scuff the sunken etched dark areas. Despite a deep etch, it remained very difficult to selectively polish those tiny silvery bits. So I tried a coffee etch, which got the 5200 parts of the knife very black, but still patinaed the bright 4600 KC bits. And I was right back where I started because I had to polish those tiny areas without taking off any of the surrounding black oxides. So the bottom line is I just polished the entire blade. It's very streaky, which I didn't like at first. And I, I polished it entirely with 1,000 grit sandpaper, thinking that those were 320 grit sandpaper marks. And then I etched it again, and they came right back. So to one degree or another, I'm thinking some of those marks are from sandpaper, maybe just uber etched sandpaper, and some of them are probably just part of the steel. All right, a quick walk through the wah handle. This is a half-inch hole drilled in our handle material with a one-half-inch dowel that I'm going to cut to length and slit down the center with a bandsaw and then flesh that out with an angle grinder very carefully. I put brass in my carter near the bolster area to keep everything centered. I've drawn some lines over some scribe marks that I did with calipers, and I'll use that while sculpting the handle on the belt sander. The stabilized burl is then sanded to 1,000 grit and buffed with white compound. Well, I didn't get the black and silver finish that I was hoping for, but the handle more than makes up for that, and it's still a pretty cool effect. I love how the shape of the bearings is preserved. So now those holes in the blade really don't do it any service whatsoever. They snag everything, even just slicing paper. They catch on the paper and stuff. But aesthetically, I think it's a pretty cool project. Had a lot of fun. What do you guys think?